Father's Day Portrait and Frame. Now this artwork comes in four parts, so you can do each section on a different day. First part is the frame. I've just got a piece of cardboard. You could use a cereal box piece of cardboard or a cardboard box that mum and dad might have around. I've laid my A4 sheet of paper on it and I've just marked out lines so that I know how big my A4 sheet of paper is. I'm then marking like two centimeters in from those lines so that I know that when I draw my Father's Day portrait and then put my frame over the top that my frame will actually stick. I can actually attach my frame to my paper. Okay, once you've drawn your lines, cut it out. Now this, you might need to get help from mum and dad for this, okay? Once it's cut out, there you go. It's time to, to decorate or just paint it. I'm painting it here with acrylic paint. You could use watercolor paint. You could use oil pastels. I probably would avoid texture. Texture's not gonna look great, but um, if you have wind up crayons, you could use that. Um, if you have paint, go for paint. I would do paint over the top of anything else. Um, the only thing is, paint needs to dry. So once we've painted the entire frame, then we need to have it dry somewhere. Now mine's not dry, but I'm just gonna do and mark my lines out on my A4 sheet of paper so that I know that when I draw my dad, I'm not going to have my dad sticking out under the frame. All right, part two is sketching our dad. So I've got my marked lines there to say you cannot go outside these lines because if I do, I won't see my portrait of my dad. Drawing a rough circle really lightly and the neck and shoulders of my dad. Now just going over to the side, it's good to draw this the basic outline of your entire image first so that you can see where it all fits in together. Now, drawing a shirt of what my dad might be wearing. I'm actually drawing my husband here. It's um, a little bit easier and hopefully in a similar age group as your dad's. He sort of sometimes wears his shirt that has like a slight V with buttons down the top. So that's the type of shirt I'm going to put him in now. Don't forget you need to have sleeves and the sleeves have creases where they go up. Yeah, to show that they're actually a sleeve and the detail that sometimes comes in with those bases of the sleeve. Now, sometimes I actually do the face a bit more detail first. Sometimes I do the other way around. This time I just did, I'm gonna draw what he was wearing. Now onto the face. So that circle guideline is my basis for my face. See, all right, just fixing up things. Notice you remembered he needed a pocket. Um, and then I come back over and look at the shape of his face drawing those halfway marks so I know where is the right place to draw the eyes because that is always the best place to start with your circles then drawing in our irises and our pupils remembering they are circles that touch the top and bottom eyelids and then our eyebrows my husband has big furry eyebrows actually They're probably a little bit furrier than this but I'll be nice to him today now we're just going to do a really simple nose so just a curve out scoop it around for the teeth in the nose and then like a little c that comes back in not really the most realistic nose but that doesn't matter we're just actually drawing a portrait of dad for us we can do our learn better noses a bit later all right the mouth nice smile because our dad's always pleasant and happy Doing the top lip and the bottom lip, giving him some crease marks to show that he's smiling and happy. Gonna start the hair, but then realize we need ears. Most of our dads we can see out their ears, so we need to make sure they're in there. My husband has a bit of scruffy hair, so I'm gonna draw in some scruffy hair. Now this is where you need to draw your dad. So if you have a photo of your dad nearby, have it near you so you can see exactly what your dad looks like but we shouldn't sort of know that so draw the hair that your dad has if he's bald or if he's got long hair or if he's got really neat hair if it's slick hair you draw it how his hair is my husband has facial hair so I'm just going to draw in a beard step three rubbing it all out ah watch out okay so i'm actually going to watercolor my portrait you can use p 
pencils or wind up crayons if you would like but if you have watercolors at home have a go at doing it it's always nice to try using a different material when we're doing our art at home so remembering you could have stopped this and done it at a different time so this doesn't have to be all happening in the one day like mine is so you have four steps this is step three so this could be on day three now I'm doing the skin color pretty much all over his face making sure I'm leaving the eyes white because they definitely need to keep the eyes white and go over the lips that's fine because the lips are more of a skin color than they are anything else and not white and the neck I'm just going to touch in a little bit of black here that should just give a depth and darkness now remember we have shadowing on our face we have shadowing on our neck on our body the whole time where the light is not getting to our body so we just keep that is where we get detail and depth on our faces all right hair brushing in his black hair it's scruffy it's not super neat because it is meant to be hair it's not meant to be perfectly painted gorgeous lines not many people have that especially after the wind that has been around oh I forgot to paint his ears there we go fix them up all right now his beard now remembering if your dad doesn't have a beard don't add in a beard but add in what he does here he might have a goatee he might have a mustache he might have no facial hair he might have glasses so if you have glasses you could either paint the glasses in or you could actually make a pair of glasses out of paper and stick them on top at the end now let's look at painting his shirt my husband's a bit of a fan of green so he wears a lot of green so we'll do a green shirt here now you might want to notice that i do try and use a couple of different colors all right once it's all dry and what color dries really quickly which is great so it wasn't a lot of time between painting and then now to drawing I've got a variety of colors here all sharp pencils to do the finer details so doing the eyes where I'm scratching the green out from the pupil section You'll notice I'm, it's coming out. I'm not just colouring in up and down. It's in that area. If you look at somebody's eyes, you'll notice the, those colours come out from the pupil. And the black for the pupil. I've gone over the eyes in a black. Um, you can go over in a brown as well if you don't want them so dark. Up to you. A bit of some eyelashes just to emphasise the eyes. I always find the eyes the most important part of a portrait because that's what we're all looking at that's where we sort of get to find out the real person is where we look at people's eyes now just going over that nose adding a brown There's, I'm adding a bit of brown that brown is a great for outlining because it's not too bold like a black is it's not as harsh as a black it's also really good for um, shading and giving a bit more depth using the red and the pink for the lips red for the outline i'm actually going to add a little bit of brown in there just to deepen that red up go over the necklines in my brown so i'm not actually using the black for an outline the brown is and giving some shading to the neck there so it looks like the neck is round we're trying to add that dimension of that realism to our portrait Take your time when you're doing all this. This should not rush. This is all sped up my video. So this has took me a lot longer than what it looks like. I've got a dark green showing that darkness behind the shirt. And outlining some of the lines just to have that the shadowing. If you look in the back of your shirt or someone else's shirt, you'll notice it's darker because the sun's not hitting and the light's not getting to it. So it's a bit darker. Showing those detailed lines where the stitching is the pocket the buttons all those light details using a green out of the shirt color so that it sort of blends in as but defining it a bit dark darker in making it stand out and there we go all right step four put your frame on top voila no not quite yet all right, this is a cool bit. We get to decorate our frame. Okay, so I've just got some PVA glue here in my barbecue sauce bottle. 
you all know I have one and it's my go-to but if you have any other glue I've just squeezed it all around because I just wanted this to feel a bit quicker but you can take more time you can use your glue stick now I've just cut out pieces of paper into squares so I've got some blue I've got and put some yellow squares in here almost like a bit like a tile like look you might have glitter or sequins or you might want to dye some pasta or you might want to chop up some straws whatever you want aluminium foil balloons Think about what you have around the house. I had some blue tissue paper, some scrunching it. I don't want to put it in there nice and neat. So putting in the blue tissue paper. I also had these weird, um, they look like toothpicks, but they're all like matchsticks, but they're colored. So I had a few of them. So I'll just add them in different spots. Then there was also some, I found some like gold and silver cardboard. So I just sort of cut it up into little pieces. And there we go, there's my frame, put it on top, get some sticky tape, stick the backs to it and voila, there is my Father's Day portrait and frame.